again, welcome. Welcome everybody to our GeoMax expert webinar. My name is Natanya and I have the pleasure to guide you today through this webinar. Here beside me is Robert Bosch, our product manager. And as you can see, we also have with us, of course, our GeoMax Academy team today, Francesco Zuccari and Andrea Mangini are joining us. You know, hopefully, that we at Geomax just love technology. You know, this technology that just makes your work simpler, makes it more accurate, faster, and all these other great benefits. And I guess you would all agree that the GNSS technology has revolutionized the market, the surveying as well as the construction market. But still, this technology has its limitations, like inaccessible points that cannot really be measured or also electromagnetic interferences etc well today we want to present you the new senate 60 gnss smart antenna that is solving some of your struggles after a presentation from robert who is going to show us the ins and outs of this antenna and how it solves those limitations our geomax academy team is going to show us the device in action. At the end, we are going to take time to answer your questions, which means from now on, you can type your questions in the chat and we will take time to discuss those at the end. So without further ado, Robert, please take over. Thank you, Natanya. Let's get started with the product presentation. So, you should be able to see my screen now. Then, I will yes, go Robert. through this uh, PowerPoint presentation and uh, showing you uh, our latest product release, namely the Zenit 60 Smart Antenna. And after that, um, I will hand over then uh, to Francesco and his team. Uh, he will show then the product in a live demo and uh, what it can do for you. And at the end, Natanya mentioned that before, uh, we all will then be available uh, for a question and answer session. So let's get started. What are the new features of our product? So um, if you compare it um, to other uh, GNSS products or also our previous ones, um, then we could introduce actually quite a few new features. Uh, the most important one are here uh, mentioned in the biggest bubbles. So uh, our Senate 60 has now included an IMU calibration free technology. And um, with that, it is resistant to electromagnetic fields. The other bubbles are showing also uh, some improvements. Um, what we could do, for example, we have a fast initialization time. Uh, we support now um, a 4G uh, modem. Um, we work uh, also with that uh, QR code, which you might know uh, already from the, our Senate 16 or Senate 40 device. We have hot swappable batteries. Um, so, um, and those batteries, they have uh, a longer uh, lifetime. So you have actually an uh, increased operating time in the field. Uh, we do support uh, the PPP technology uh, with the Senate 60. And um, we are also able uh, to achieve a quite high reliability. Oh, skip one. This slide here is just showing all the features which you saw before now in a listed mode. And um, by the way, you will get later on um, that uh, presentation uh, for download. And uh, then you can uh, go through all these detailed explanations again. So I will not uh, list now all of them uh, again. One thing uh, listed here on that slide, which was not in the bubbles shown before, is actually uh, the last point here. Uh, a big benefit of the Senate 60 is actually the components uh, we have built in, in our 
a device. We actually work here together uh, with strong partners like Novatel, uh, Lemo, Sartel, which guarantee actually highest product quality. The product um, we offer actually in four variants. Uh, on the upper right, uh, you see here, we call it the Cadillac version. Uh, so the antenna uh, with the UHF radio and the tilt uh, IMU technology. Um, we offer it also without the radio and we have two uh, variants uh, with LTE only, meaning without radio and without tilt functionality or uh, one uh, with radio but without tilt functionality. So let's talk a bit about this IMU technology, uh, which is now built in uh, in the Senate 60. Uh, with that uh, IMU technology, uh, you have actually several benefits and advantages. Uh, the, the biggest one I would say is actually you save a lot of time because there is no need anymore to calibrate the sensor. You need to do an initializing, but this takes only a couple of seconds, whereas calibration before took several minutes. You can actually tilt the uh, antenna up to 60 degrees and still achieve reasonable results. And another big advantage and that is shown actually on that uh, sketch here. Uh, this technology is now resistant to elect electromagnetic fields and you would not have to worry about anymore about reliability of your, um, of your results when working close to objects which are actually electromagnetic. What does IMU stand for? IMU stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. And here it's in um, brief described what does that mean. So an, uh, an IMU sensor typically consists of uh, two sensors actually. Uh, one is an accelerometer and the other is the gyroscope. Accelerometer uh, you measure changes in speed uh, which gives you actually relative positioning changes uh, later on and the gyroscope you measure changes in angles. To measure uh, in tilted mode, uh, I show here two sketches. So the, the interesting point here is that typically you are not interested in the position at the top of the antenna where all the satellite signals are coming in, but you are interested at the bottom, at the tip of the pole. And to come to these coordinates um, for non-tilted measurements, it's fairly simple. I mean, you uh, receive the uh, satellite position uh, in the center of the antenna or at the ARP point, and you simply subtract the pole height uh, from the set value uh, to come to the coordinates of the um, uh, pole tip, right? And for the tilt measurement, you would need to have some additional information to come to the coordinate of interest or to the point of interest. Uh, we still need the pole height mentioned here, but on top, we also need to have that tilted value, how far are you tilting the uh, antenna, and you need the orientation towards the north direction. And these two values, the tilt and the orientation, that is provided uh, by the IMU. Right? So knowing the tilt angle, tilt direction, pole length is giving you the uh, coordinates on the ground. In XPAD, you can actually set whether you want to use or make use of this tilt functionality or not. So this is just a screenshot showing that uh, in XPAD you can turn that on or off. Also in XPAD, um, I show here some screenshots how it would look before the tilting uh, is started. So I mentioned before, uh, there is a bit of initializing necessary. Francesco and his team will show that later on. So initializing, what does that mean? You set up your antenna and you need to move it around a bit. And then um, after some seconds, um, 
this icon here shown in expat on the lower right corner will turn into blue and then you see um, that you are ready uh, for tilt measurements and on the uh, lower right screenshot here is just an example you would see how this looks then if you do for example a stakeout you always have that uh, icon displaying actually also the tilt value uh, showing to you uh, uh, the current status of the tilt This also in brief, just an overview. You would find that also in the user manual, an overview of these different icons and these different uh, status settings you can have then in Xpad and towards the tilt. The next few slides are just showing then some uh, overviews on uh, other hardware components uh, we built in in the Zenit 60. Uh, this one here. Um, is um, displaying a few words about the ME board uh, we have built in. We work here with Novatel with the OEM board 719. You might know that uh, already from the Zenit 40 has the same measurement engine included with its 555 channels. Um, with that uh, ME board, we support actually all common satellite signals which are right now available uh, in the sky. We do also support PPP technology. PPP stands for precise point positioning. That's a service uh, provided from Novatel, called also TerraStar, um, to give you highest possible accuracies uh, in areas where you cannot set up um, your own base station or where you cannot receive uh, RTK corrections uh, from any service provider. This technology we use also already uh, with the Zenit 40. You might know that from there already. For the UHF radio, we work together with our partner Sartel. Uh, with Sartel, uh, uh, the big advantage is um, that their radios uh, support actually the most uh, common uh, RTK uh, protocols which are currently in the market, giving you here highest flexibility uh, combining different, um, different products in a base robot setup. Here an overview on all the connections you can actually make to the Zenit 60. So uh, we have three wireless connections. We support WLAN, we certainly support Bluetooth, and also I mentioned before the 4G modem. And on the right-hand side, uh, you see also uh, the, the list of ports we have uh, for cable connection. A few words to the environmental protection. Uh, that's actually a uh, quite good advantage we have with the Zenit 40. Uh, we were able uh, to uh, build it up in a way that we are um, fulfilling the IP68 standard. What does that mean? Um, let me explain that a bit. So IP68 um, has actually two meanings. The first value, the number six here, uh, is for the dust and dirt protection. And here we have the highest um, rating you can have. So it's fully dust and dirt tight. And the second value, the number eight, um, withstands powerful water jets. And on top, uh, and that is that number eight, um, it uh, withstands actually a temporary uh, immersion underwater. Um, other um, uh, advantages here, um, you can drop it, you shouldn't, but if it happens, then you can drop it uh, from up to two meters on a hard surface. Um, you can operate it between temperature range of minus 40 to uh, 65 degrees. And another uh, quite good improvement we were able to implement is actually the magnesium housing. So the magnesium housing um, is very, um, uh, how 
to say has, has a good advantage when it comes um, to electrical interference. So um, it has a, a, a very good, um, how to say, resistance uh, towards this electrical interference um, signals. We do support with the Zenit 60 also that QRI connect, which you might know already from Zenit 16 and uh, from Zenit 40. And uh, having that also implemented in the Zenit 60, um, we can say now that our complete GNSS portfolio um, has that um, feature. And with that, the advantage that you can very easy connect to the device via Bluetooth. Uh, that's shown on the bottom right. Uh, you simply uh, take a picture uh, with, your, um, with your tablet or smartphone, wherever you have your uh, expat installed, and then you get automatically connected to your device. Um, again, uh, a summary of what I mentioned before, that we work together with strong partners. Uh, we from uh, Geomax do belong also uh, to Hexagon, and with that we profit actually uh, from the he uh, Hexagon um, technology. We work together with Satel, uh, providing the UHF radio, LEMO uh, for the connectors, for the cable connections, uh, Novatel for the OEM board and for the positioning algorithm and Taras Darben uh, for the PPP support. This is an overview uh, on the data sheet. It's um, way in two small letters so that you uh, can uh, go now through all of them. Uh, we skipped that. Uh, you will get that presentation later on, or you have also the chance to download the data sheet uh, from our product web page. So, I explained now uh, all the new features we implemented in the uh, Zenit 60. What does that, what does that mean? So, uh, with features alone, I mean, you, uh, you cannot do much, right? So features you want to turn into benefits. And um, when we look at this slide here, then the biggest benefit uh, actually from all the features we implemented is the increase of productivity, right? Um, so with all the performance increase, higher reliability, increased operating time, um, the saving time on the um, uh, calibration or initialization at the beginning, um, that nails down all to higher productivity. And the last sentence here is actually showing that in a nutshell, uh, not only higher uh, productivity, but reliable and on time. Again, uh, all the features I explained before here, uh, a list of the main benefits uh, you would have with the uh, Zenit 60 antenna. And here, it's important to mention that the biggest advantage you get actually if you combine it uh, with the XPAD software uh, from Geomax. So um, not only the hardware, uh, the, the improvements on the hardware is giving you are uh, giving you benefits, but the combination of the hardware and software together um, is making actually uh, best out of the solution. All these benefits um, can be displayed here in that uh, simple screenshot. So combining hardware software together uh, is making best out of your product. And here also one word uh, to XPAD 365. Um, with the Senate 60 and um, XPAD Ultimate, if you have um, XPAD 365, you can actually make use of a collaborative survey in the field, meaning more than one person can work at the same time in the same project and, for example, stake out then several points 
with several uh, devices at the same time. Relative positioning. So this is just showing um, the Zenit 60, how it relates uh, to our uh, existing products. Just you know that slide, I showed it before already, the four different variants uh, we are offering with the Zenit 60. Um, and uh, with the Zenit 60, actually, we uh, were given the chance to fill here that field on the upper right uh, hand of the uh, of the upper right side of, of our portfolio um, with all the uh, features um, giving this high functionality uh, to the Zenit 60. So um, with the Zenit 16, uh, right now more our entry level product, uh, the Zenit 40 more in the mid range of the portfolio together with the Zenit 60 non tilt version and then the uh, Zenit 60 with the tilt functionality um, gives you highest uh, flexibility and all the uh, options you need in the field for your survey. In a nutshell here, um, uh, the comparison between the Zenit 16, Zenit 40 and Zenit 60. Um, this is uh, more or less an extract from the family brochure uh, of our portfolio. You can download that as well from our web page anytime. So, uh, if you buy a Senate 60, if you want to buy a Senate 60, what does it all include? I mentioned before the uh, four different variants we are uh, offering. Um, so, uh, package um, comes by default with all this um, um, with all these accessories so it comes in a container you have a charger it comes by default with two batteries uh, table quick guide SD card for data storage uh, and the user manual is also included the package does also include typically the pole so uh, with that package you could start um, immediately with your survey. We do offer also services uh, with the Zenit 60. What kind of services is that? Um, we do offer extended warranty. You know that already from Zenit 16 or Zenit 40. We have that there as well. So you can uh, choose between a one year or two year extended warranty. Uh, or if you decide later on, uh, you want to extend your warranty, that's then also uh, possible that you extend it then by one year. For service, uh, you don't need to worry. Uh, we have uh, worldwide more than 100 service partners um, which you could contact in case of uh, problems with your device. Uh, on that map here, I displayed our two main central technical service centers. Uh, we have one in Germany and one in the US. Um, but with all these service partners distributed uh, on the globe, um, I'm sure um, there is also one service partner close to you. With that, I'm closing my presentation and I'm happy to hand over back to Natanya and then to Francesco and his team for the live demo. Exactly, I quickly sneaked in. So thank you very much, Robert, for your presentation. So as you can see, there is a, there are a lot, a lot of benefits for you with the Senate 60, but you might say now, well, what about those five challenges and how to overcome them? So first of all, the challenge should not be able to reach an inaccessible point as well. With your standard 60 and IMU function, that's no longer a challenge. Same for challenge number two, the distorted measurement because of electromagnetic fields. Well, no longer a thing for you to worry uh, of. You can be confident uh, that your measurements are correct. Number three would be the time you lose for calibration. Well, the calibration free standard 60 um, makes that thing a thing of the past. What about software? Software with GNSS can be very complicated. 
but you will see afterwards in the, de the live demo that our expert ultimate is super simple and you don't have to struggle with dif difficult software. And last but not least, it can be very hard to keep up with technology, especially as the construction industry is moving forward and forward and surveying technology gets more complex. Well, this Senate 60 package with software with Expert 365 is technology made simple for you. So you don't have to struggle with com a complicated technology. You can really do this thing and go into digitalization uh, be and be confident that uh, the equipment you work with is going to get you better and faster to your um, success. So now I want to hand over Francesco. Are you ready? Uh, is everything ready uh, in the room? So we born ready, Natania. Can you hear me? Great. Yes, we can hear you. We can see you, and we're actually going to turn up our cameras now because now you have the central stage. Okay. Th thanks a lot, Natania, and thanks, Robert, uh, uh, for uh, your presentation of this. Uh, uh, amazing new product. Uh, so I'm Francesco Zuccari. I'm the technical support uh, manager uh, and responsible for GMX Academy. I would like also to thank you for uh, your participation. Uh, so this is our uh, newborn uh, GNSS receiver, the Zenit, uh, Zenit 60. Uh, this is uh, uh, really the state of art uh, of uh, uh, technology. Uh, so as uh, already, uh, Robert told you uh, we have uh, several uh, uh, different uh, sensors in it, uh, but uh, let's start uh, uh, to check it uh, uh, quickly from uh, um, an hardware point of view. So the Zenit 60 receivers uh, has a uh, two battery compartment, uh, so it means that uh, I can use uh, the double battery in it and uh, if uh, uh, one of the battery uh, goes down uh, because of, of uh, empty power. The receiver automatically switch the power to the second battery and uh, is always uh, um, keep it on and, and uh, working. So the battery compartment, as you can see now, the receiver is uh, uh, switched on. I can remove the battery A uh, from the compartment. Uh, under this compartment, uh, uh, we, we can find uh, the SIM slot uh, for the internal GSM uh, receiver that uh, just to remember to you, it's a 4G receivers, uh, 4G uh, network, sorry. Uh, plus we have uh, the uh, uh, micro SD compartment uh, to store uh, the raw data and uh, increase the, the um, memory capability. So. Uh, just to mention uh, something uh, really nice about also the battery. In each moment, uh, I can press uh, uh, the button, the button on the battery, and check uh, uh, the charging level uh, of uh, the battery. Uh, this is a, a procedure that uh, I can do even uh, when the battery is inserted into the uh, into the receiver. So, uh, really compact, uh, uh, the uh, GSM antenna is uh, embedded in the receiver, means that uh, here we have just uh, a TNC connector for the UCF uh, radio, uh, that is a, a satellite radio, also the state of the art of uh, uh, the UCF radio, and uh, two LIMO connector, one uh, is for uh, the power, if you want to run uh, uh, the receiver as a base and uh, you want to connect an external power source. And the second one uh, is uh, for communication, uh, in case you want to connect, uh, for example, uh, uh, an external uh, uh, radio modem, uh, uh, like, for example, a 35 watt uh, uh, radio modem. So, this is the receiver, one button to uh, switch on and off uh, uh, the unit. Uh, very compact IP68. But let's start uh, with the real uh, um, with the real demo. Today, what we will show you is uh, how to use uh, the receiver uh, in uh, in your day life uh, uh, work. Let me raise the the pole up to the right elevation. Okay. 
Now, are we ready for uh, to share the, the tablet also? Okay, perfect. Uh, uh, in this moment, I'm connected to the uh, to the receiver with uh, uh, with uh, Xpad Ultimate uh, Android version. Uh, is the last version that uh, just to remember to you. Um, uh, it's uh, uh, now uh, with the service pack to uh, release it just a uh, uh, few days a uh, uh, few days ago. So. In this case, uh, in the settings, uh, GNSS and Total Station, uh, I can uh, easily find uh, all the uh, uh, all the receivers uh, available and connected. In this case, uh, if I want to use the QR code uh, of the receiver to quickly connect it, uh, to quickly connect it, uh, what I can do easily is to unplug the unit uh, just because. Uh, I'm more comfortable uh, doing like this. I have the QR code on the base uh, and uh, with the tablet, uh, just enabling the camera. Okay, here the software has already found uh, the right configuration setting. With this receiver, I created two different configuration. I will use the one with the, uh, with the IMU. Uh, I can configure the receiver even if uh, uh, was already configured. And during the configuration, I can uh, install again my receiver on the uh, on the pool. So, quick process. Here we are. Is connecting uh, to the receiver. And uh, what we will uh, we will show is the use of the uh, receiver with the with the IMU. The receiver is connected, is configured successfully. I can easy access with the GNSS uh, button on the bottom of the of the screen. It's already starting to receiving the data. I'm connected uh, with uh, uh, the um, I will connect. So really quick, just the time to say that uh, I'm connected to the um, to a GNSS uh, uh, network uh, in a room, uh, uh, RTK fixed. Uh, so uh, this receiver has really uh, um, an in really fast to uh, quickly fix uh, the, uh, uh, the position. It's uh, fully, uh, fully customized uh, to receive uh, all the constellation by default. Uh, so I'm working with the GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, and uh, uh, Galileo. So let's go to the to the survey survey points. Uh, so in this case, as you can see on the bottom right of the screen, uh, the uh, the sensor is telling me that is not uh, yet ready to work because the IMU need to uh, uh, to feel uh, a bit of movement. Uh, I just uh, need to uh, make some few steps, and that's it. Uh, you can see that now on the bottom right of the screen, I can uh, see the um, the inclination of uh, uh, my pole. And uh, if somebody of you noted that uh, when the uh, 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 IMU data was not uh, um, uh, ready because of uh, this uh, uh, this process, uh, this really quick process was needed, uh, so my position was not available. This is because. Uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a safe uh, uh, it's a safe process uh, for the user because uh, it will not give me the coordinates in case uh, I have selected the use of the IMU but the IMU was not uh, uh, correctly um, uh, started. Okay, so as you can see, I can always see my inclination on the on the screen. Uh, so, just uh, also another another thing that uh, is really important to mention about the use of the IMU. As uh, Robert already told you, uh, the IMU can work up to 60 degrees uh, uh, slope. But do you know how much is 60 degrees slope? So, let's do a test. Already like this, I'm at 35 degrees, okay? So, here we are at 56 degrees. Now, what uh, what I suggest as a user is to use it uh, up to uh, 30 degrees. That it's already enough. Why it's enough? Not because of uh, any kind of uh, uh, hardware limitation or uh, uh, problem in ter terms of uh, accuracy. The accuracy is exactly uh, the same. But 
uh, is because of the sky plot. So in this case, with this slope, uh, I'm reading only the satellite in that position of uh, the sky. Obviously, I'm losing all the satellites that are writing on top of uh, uh, my head. It means that uh, I can have problem to track the satellites, obviously, because uh, uh, I'm just uh, hiding uh, all the other satellites available uh, on top of me. Anyway, uh, as you have already seen, uh, the, the process is uh, really quick uh, to measure a point. Uh, I can easily uh, do a measurement uh, like this, uh, measure and store. Uh, the point uh, is uh, saved. Double click on the screen. It's the point uh, one or 167. If I choose to stake out the point, I really like this software. So I'm exactly exactly on the point uh, uh, with uh, uh, a very good uh, accuracy. So what is uh, the other benefit uh, with the IMU uh, that is uh, always working? I can uh, really be quick uh, to uh, show, to measure some points. Uh, we can also uh, later show you the difference uh, in a video. We can show you the difference in terms of uh, productivity. Uh, to work uh, with a receiver with an IMU activated and uh, with a receiver without. So measure and store. I can measure really quickly uh, some points. Uh, uh, so just because I'm already working on uh, another um, another job, you cannot see the difference. Let me uh, quick uh, close this job, create a new one. Okay, accept. I go in survey. Now, now I am on a click uh, in a quick um, in a new job, and uh, what I can do is, uh, for example, uh, to enable the auto survey point uh, with the stop and go uh, function. I can enable the line, uh, and uh, I go again uh, to start the point. Uh, okay, first point. Uh, Second point, I don't need to take care about uh, uh, about the uh, the verticality of my pole just because uh, uh, the IMU is doing the job for me. So in this case, really quickly, I can just stop on the point I need and uh, continue my survey. Okay. So let's stop. What else? Uh, also, during the uh, during the survey, I can uh, always uh, let me uh, stop the line, uh, measure a single point. Uh, let uh, let me show again uh, the uh, accuracy measuring a manhole, for example, the accuracy of the of the IMU. I go on a corner of a, a manhole uh, in this case. Okay. So even if it, with a slope of uh, 20 degrees, uh, so let me enable the standard survey point, uh, okay, measure and store. So it's 20 degrees, uh, double click, uh, again, uh, M7, take out, okay. And I'm exactly on the point, even if I uh, um, inclinate my pole, uh, I can rotate in any in any direction, and always the accuracy is always uh, uh, the the same. Uh, another nice feature is that uh, also in the in the three D visualization. Now I am really close to the point. Uh, in the three D visualization, you can uh, you can see the the pole that graphically use the inclination readed by the uh, the IMU uh, to show me in which direction I'm uh, uh, I am so 3d stake out I return on the point uh, and that's it really quick really easy uh, okay that's good So I think that uh, uh, 
another another very nice uh, uh, very nice uh, um, uh, feature of this kind of receiver is the possibility to measure in accessible points. Uh, so imagine that I need to to measure a point uh, uh, that for me it's really important and is just uh, uh, under uh, under this card. What I can do is to choose the point uh, and uh, with the slope uh, measure. Okay, I'm on 25 degrees uh, and the point is stored. So uh, once we uh, we started to work with this receiver, I was uh, wondering uh, how fast uh, was the IMU to correct uh, my position. And uh, really, uh, I, I tried to challenge uh, a bit uh, the uh, the receiver, uh, and I will show you uh, what I did it. So. I choose the, to uh, to measure a master point, or uh, what I can do is also to increase uh, the measurement time uh, on the uh, on the point. I go in survey setup, uh, in survey, and uh, uh, I will stay on the point. Uh, uh, yes, let me do ten seconds. It's fine. So I place uh, my pole. Uh, on a point, uh, I start to measure, and it will take uh, the receiver is taking uh, 10 seconds uh, of uh, measurement. And uh, what I normally I have to do is to uh, keep the receiver really fixed. Uh, it's a procedure that uh, without uh, uh, a, a bipod uh, or, or a support for the pole, it's very hard uh, to do it. Uh, but in this case, uh, let's go to check uh, the uh, result. The point is uh, the M9. So that's perfect. Uh, the receiver and the software has collected all the information that the IMU was sending uh, and uh, it matched it. Uh, and uh, now I have, so I am embarrassed because uh, I have, uh, so it's even uh, too, uh, too precise. <laughs> So, few millimeters. Um, so, inaccessible point, uh, uh, receiver uh, really quick uh, and IMU really fast uh, to give me the, uh, um, uh, the accuracy. Uh, I think uh, uh, it will be a, a good moment, Andrea, to, to show also the, the comparison video, uh, just because uh, uh, to uh, let you uh, understand exactly how uh, what is the benefit in terms of uh, productivity. What uh, we did uh, this uh, this morning, right before the uh, uh, the um, the webinar, was to record uh, uh, a video. Uh, we did a quick survey of uh, uh, this area, measure, measuring the points uh, uh, with uh, the IMU. Uh, with the same receiver, with the IMU activated uh, and uh, without the IMU activated. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is the result. Okay, Andrea, let's go.
Okay, here I am again. Uh, so, uh, as you have seen uh, from the video, uh, the uh, the productivity with the uh, IMU is incredibly uh, faster compared to the to the, the same receiver without uh, the uh, the IMU. So now the time is uh, really running. Uh, before we uh, we enter in the question and answer uh, uh, session, we are already receiving uh, uh, a lot of questions. Uh, just to remember you, you can use uh, uh, the top right uh, side uh, chat uh, menu to send us uh, uh, your questions. So uh, right before to enter in the, in the question and answer, I would like to show you also another very nice uh, uh, test that is uh, the IP68 uh, uh, test. I'm just taking uh, uh, my receiver. Andrea, please can close to me, the receiver is switched on, I can put it in the water, the receiver is continuing to, uh, to work without any kind of problem. Uh, obviously, the connection at the beginning, uh, the Bluetooth is not going through the water, so is uh, uh, really connecting, okay? The GPS fixed position is, uh, <laughs> it's still alive and ready, uh, ready to work in this uh, very nice day in Rome, uh, also the receiver is, uh, uh, is taking uh, his butt. So, Natania, thanks a lot. Uh, um, yeah, we can uh, enter in the, in the question and answer session. Uh, Andrea, also, also you, please help me to, uh, to go to the, through, the, uh, through the session. Uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed uh, this uh, quick presentation. In the meantime, Francesco, thank you so much. It was really, really a great presentation. I love the video, <laughs> especially the coffee time. Who doesn't want to have time for coffee? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you everybody for sending in your question. Um, please continue doing so. And I would like to start the first one. And I think that's a good one for you, Robert. So one person asked if it's possible after purchasing the Senate 60 to upgrade it uh, to uh, an IMU uh, module? That's a good question, but uh, no, actually, I have to uh, deny that. Uh, this is not possible. We offer these four variants and they come as they are. Right now, anyway, it's not possible to upgrade them, but we are looking uh, into that option and see maybe uh, with future developments uh, that the upgrade would be possible. But right now, uh, sorry to say, no, not mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for, for that answer, Robert. Um, please, again, uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate and, and ask them. Um, then we have another question. Let me see where it is. This one, yes. So, is to send it 60 available to all the distributors everywhere uh, globally? Yes, we released it worldwide, so uh, it should be um, uh, available for all our GMX distributors. Perfect. And if you don't know who your closest GMX distributor is, you can go on our website. Uh, there is uh, a site where you can find your distributor, and you will uh, get all the list of all the distributors and see which one is closest to you. Then we have a new question. How to know which battery to remove if one is very low? Can you explain this to us, Robert, or do we want to give this question to Francesco? Please, Francesco, I think you uh, started at the beginning explaining the yep. product. So it's very, very, very easy because uh, in each moment uh, I can uh, open uh, the uh, the battery compartment. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe I'm not connected to the software. The software is telling me the uh, the battery level, but in each moment uh, I can uh, easily open the battery compartment uh, and just uh, clicking on the battery, I can check uh, the charge status and decide which one has to be uh, replaced. Uh, very easy and very useful uh, to know. Uh, the battery is also the, the same battery of uh, our controller, the Zenius, uh, the Zenius X. So it's uh, 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 for those of you that uh, has already the, 
uh, that controller uh, you can share also the accessorize the battery and uh, and the charger so in each moment uh, just uh, uh, open uh, the battery compartment uh, click uh, on the button uh, on the intelligent battery and uh, check the battery status perfect thank you it's always better if we immediately see it yeah and maybe to add here as i mentioned at the very beginning of my presentation the batteries are hot swappable so you can exchange a battery anytime without interrupting your complete survey oh, great great yeah we have another question. Um, a person yes, is asking if we have a, a compensation in the Senate 60 when it is moved to the north, where there might be less satellites. Robert, again, can you explain us how this works and um, how we can uh, find a solution to still get really reliable uh, measurements? Yes, also here. Uh, Natania, this is a very good question, and it's actually uh, for all the surveyors out there uh, important uh, to know that when we say we do tilt compensation and we can uh, tilt our antenna up to 60 degree, then there are all, also other uh, conditions um, which are influencing the accuracy of the results. And that is actually, uh, I mean, the biggest one is the availability of satellite. And here I uh, would like to refer to that uh, little example Francesco actually gave at the beginning of his live demo. He, he showed that actually, that if you um, tilt your antenna towards north, right? And on the north side, on the, uh, on the side, we typically have less satellites than on the east, south or west, right? On the north side, uh, there are less satellites. And the more you tilt it towards north, uh, the less satellite signals you might receive. And with these less satellite signals, uh, the accuracy decreases. Mm -hmm. So, um, but maybe as a final uh, statement, um, a safe uh, way uh, or of, uh, rule of thumb uh, we could give here is if you uh, tilt it not more than 30 degrees, and that's still a lot what you saw before, Francesco showed that as well, uh, how far yeah. 30 degrees is, um, that would give you then uh, still reasonable um, uh, accuracies in all directions, right? You would need to worry whether you build it now to north, south, east, or west. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. So I would, I would like uh, also to to add uh, uh, Robert and Natania, just because uh, uh, now uh, our um, followers, uh, what they're, uh, they're they're looking on the screen uh, is the receiver. Uh, that is showing me and not it in initialize, uh, initialized um, sensor. Uh, even if the accuracy, the GNSS accuracy, it's uh, a centimetric accuracy. This is because uh, the IMU uh, need uh, at the beginning to feel the movement. So uh, when I start to work in the field, uh, to walk in the field, uh, like uh, I did it uh, uh, just at the beginning uh, uh, of uh, um, the, uh, the webinar, as you can see now, the sensor is still again running because uh, the, uh, when you stop, uh, when you f are stopping in a uh, in a point uh, for uh, some minutes, uh, automatically the uh, the IMU as a uh, uh, so will uh, uh, decrease uh, the accuracy, and uh, at that moment the, the software uh, will tell you, okay. Uh, the IMU uh, accuracy is not enough, please uh, just move uh, a bit uh, and then uh, the IMU is uh, again uh, calibrated. So really quick and uh, really easy to, uh, to do. Great. Thank you for this additional explanation. We have another question asking um, about the satellites that are available at, at the same time and if those can be chosen or if it's automatic. Um, Francesco, do you want to, to answer, um, maybe even via the software, uh, about how, how this looks like and how this can be chosen or being done automatically? Yeah, sure. So, by the way, um, in each moment, uh, what is better uh, for, the, for the user is to use uh, all the GNSS, uh, all the um, uh, satellites available in the sky. But anyway, in this moment, we are using a full constellation uh, uh, network uh, um, uh, RTK message means that I'm using uh, all the available satellite. Uh, what I can do 
is to go in the um, uh, in the settings and uh, switch off or on uh, uh, the uh, the other constellations. Uh, I can easily go in the sky plot and check uh, uh, what are the position of the satellites, and also in this case choose. Uh, uh, which constellation I can switch off uh, between the uh, the Beidou and uh, um, uh, so between the Beidou and the others. Thank you very much, Francesco. So you keep sending in your questions. We take a few more, but uh, be assured that uh, if we are not able to answer your question, we will still make sure that the answers are coming are coming to you. Um, Andrea, are you by any chance seeing the questions? Because we have one in Italian, and I'm afraid that I cannot answer it. Yes, Can you handle this last question? Yes, uh, we have a question from uh, an Italian customer asking for the, the accuracy in the Zenit 35 Pro tag, uh, dual tag, uh, and uh, in comparison with the Zenit 60 with the IMO. First of all, we need to consider also the water depth and also Robert said before. So if we tilt the, the receiver, of course, uh, in the sky plot uh, is quite different. You will receive less satellite, also that course of the satellite will be can, can decrease. Uh, but also you can uh, we have to uh, talk about also the time and of the point. Usually the point in the world type, uh, we have to first of all calibrate the the tag, I mean the dual tag, so same vertical position, calibrate the bubble, and then you can measure the two points uh, from two different uh, uh, point of view, so from two different positions. Instead, with the IMO, you can quickly move to the point without calibrating anything, and you can measure the point. But if we, if we consider only the accuracy, of course, uh, we have to consider uh, uh, the, the tilting of the, of the pole and, uh, of course, the sky plot of the receiver. Perfect. Thank you very much, Andrea. Um, so yeah, I will so ask one question if you want. I uh, can also reply to, the, to that question. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I will ask okay. one last question. Uh, maybe back to you, Robert. So when I get my brand new Senate 60, do I first have to do a special calibration to make it work? No, that's actually that uh, big advantage of this technology. Uh, Francesco showed before what to do for a startup and that would be the same if you buy a new. Um, you do need to do a bit of an initialization. So this takes this few seconds where you uh, move the antenna around until that uh, icon on the lower right, what we see here also on the screen, is turning into blue and then you can start with your surveys. There is no separate calibration or something like that necessary. Perfect. So if you buy your Senate 60 today, you can immediately get started. Well, thank you to everybody uh, for joining this webinar. Thank you to our amazing GMX Academy team who is running these great, great and very fun demos. And of, of course, thank you, Robert, for explaining everything to us. And I wish you a very nice day. You will receive the recording. You will receive the presentation. And uh, if you decide to buy Senate 60 with Expert Ultimate and Expert 365, I wish you a lot of fun with those products. Uh, send us a, a post on social media. We are always happy to see your, your uh, projects in the field and how you are using our equipment. And with that, I want to say goodbye, everybody, and see you next time. Thanks a lot, Natania. Thanks a lot, Robert and Andrea. See you next time, guys. For any kind of additional questions, uh, please uh, send us an email uh, to academy at gmexpositioning.com. It will be a pleasure to reply to all your questions. Thanks a lot. Thanks to everyone. Thank you.